Morgan with Eye Health Tube, and we're visiting with Dr. Rappaport. Dr. Rappaport, how does ATP affect aging and memory function? Yes, that's, that's a very, very important question. As we have seen before, a causal for aging is the reduction in ATP synthesis in skeletal muscle. So there is essentially a lower level of ATP in the body. And when one moves from the age of 35 to the age of 70, there is a half of the ATP inside skeletal half. muscle, right, and half inside the blood. As a matter of fact, the improvement of skeletal muscle function has been the holy grail of the pharmaceutical and the nutritional mm -hmm. supplement industry, trying to come up with agents that would reduce the impact of aging. But I'd like to talk a little bit about the effect of ATP on the circulation to the brain, what's called the cerebral circulation. All right. Now, there are several agents that ATP stimulates that act in vasodilation. There is one that's very interested, uh, that a lot of people are in being interested in now, that's called endothelium-derived hyperpolarization factor. And that's different from nitric oxide. This is a peptide that mostly is in charge of the stimulation or the dilation of the cerebral arterioles. These are the small blood vessels in the brain. Now, the, the, it's, it's a little bit more fascinating than that because uh, the years ago, the first one to look into this was Tom Forrester in St. Louis, and he was looking into uh, the old adage, the old famous adage in Latin, it's uh, uh, mens sana in corpore sano, which essentially means a healthy brain in a healthy ah. body. Healthy brain and a healthy, healthy body. body. And what, uh, what people attributed it to is to the release of ATP and adenosine from exercising muscles. ATP and adenosine are called also purines. All right. And this has to do with the ability of purines to stimulate blood flow to the brain. And it has been shown by Forrester and others that you need very, very small amounts to stimulate the cerebral vasculature. Okay. And in the brain, in the central nervous system, flow equals metabolism. In other words, the increase in blood flow equals the increase in metabolism. And increase in metabolism e e means increase in function. Memory function. Memory function, cognitive okay. function. Okay. All kinds perception of fatigue, for instance. This is another function. Uh, so there are a lot of functions, but the major one, I agree with you, is the cognitive function. All right, the so, cognitive function. Right. So the ATP would affect the cognitive function. The cognitive function, along with other functions. There are, for instance, what's called runner's high. And okay. So this is also, this is a perception of lack of fatigue. Ah. That there are other functions that are affected, but the major aspect of all this is the stimulation of blood flow to the brain. And flow in the central nervous system equates with metabolism. Metabolism is equal to function. Metabolism is equal to function. So right. you say this lack of fatigue, you, would, you wouldn't sense fatigue is what you're saying. That's correct. It's okay. a perception. It's a and perception. Again, and again, when we age, and the blood vessels lose their agility, they become stiffened, and there is, not, there is not enough ATP to enhance the circulation, we lose all this. But we can replace this ATP, can't we? We can replace some of it, some the of extracellular it. one. Good, good. And you, all right, so thank you, Dr. Rappaport, for talking with us about memory function and the loss of ATP. You're we'll welcome. meet again.